Hello everyone! In this video tutorial I will discuss how to use the database capabilities of Super Pro Designer and for that purpose I will be using the SYN farm example that is provided with the tool. The process itself won't be discussed but if you're interested in knowing how this model was created you can study the readme file that is included with the example. This example is automatically installed with the program in the installation directory. If you still don't have a copy of Super Pro Designer you can always download an evaluation version from our website www.intelligent.com. This video assumes that you are familiar with the fundamentals of Super Pro Designer. If you're not familiar with the fundamentals, please make sure to watch the Super Pro Designer tutorial videos which are available on our YouTube channel. Super Pro Designer is equipped with a number of databanks for storing information of the various resources. You can access the various databanks through the databanks menu. During the Super Pro Designer tutorial, I discussed how to access pure components and mixtures from the databases and I explained how to create new ones. Through this menu, you can see the other types of databanks which include binary coefficients, heat transfer agents, power types, labor types, consumables, equipment materials, currencies, sites and resources, equipment, processes, and then the rest are options to edit the databanks. Through this option, SuperPro gives you the possibility to edit the location and association of the various databases with the program itself. At this point, it's important to mention that SuperPro Designer works with databases that are in Microsoft Access format. Also, for the various databanks, there are two versions. The first is the designer database whose data cannot be modified and the second is the user database which can be used to add and store user-defined data. Moreover, by clicking on this button, the program brings up the following dialog through which you may associate your copy of Super Pro Designer with another user database. Here you see the various databases of the program. This one here, for instance, is the user database and if we click on this button, we can bring up its location. The user database may be located on a PC, but if SuperPro is used in a corporate environment, it's also possible to have a corporate or departmental user database located in a company server, and then through this, the various users can associate their copy of SuperPro with the central database in order to share its contents. Similarly, you may associate your copy of SuperPro with another system database through this, and then down here, you can associate it to the Dipper database, which has good component data for over 2,000 materials. The Dipper database needs to be purchased separately. Let's now have a look at the interfaces of the various databanks starting with the peer components. As you may remember from the Super Pro Designer tutorial, peer components can be accessed through the Tasks menu, and through this option you can edit and register peer components. Peer components can be registered into your Super Profile from the various databanks. Through this drop down menu, you can select the databank from which you would like to register the component. These include the user and the deeper database. By default, the user database is empty until you create a component and save it within that database. You can save components from your registered list into the user database through this dialog by selecting the component from this list and then clicking on the deposit button. Let's say for example that we want to create a new component for this model and we're going to give it a name of new comp. When you create a new component through the flowsheet it is only part of the model and not of any specific database. If you would like to reuse that component in another model, or perhaps let others use it, you can deposit it into the user database by selecting it and then clicking on the deposit button. This automatically saves your created component in the user database. Another way of accessing the user database and populating it is directly through the peer components databank, which you can access through the databanks menu. Through this dialog, you see all the components that are available to us from the various databases. 
We can filter the component databases through this button, and if we only want to see the user database, we deselect all the others. Here you see the various components that belong to the user database, including the new component that we just created. Through this dialog, it's also possible to add new components to the user database by clicking on the Add New button, giving our component a name, and then you can access its properties by double-clicking on it. Through here, you can edit its properties. An important thing to mention here is that when you add components in this manner, they are directly saved to the database and not to the file. The same thing applies for the other databanks. For instance, if you would like to create a new labor type, you simply need to select labor type from the databanks menu. And if you would like to see what is available on the user databank, you can deselect the designer database. And to create new labor, you can click on the add new labor button and you can specify a name. Let's leave the default name for this example. Finally, to specify the parameters of that labor type, you can double-click the item and then modify it. Please note that the only two resources which can be added directly to the file are peer components and stock mixtures. All other resources need to be added to the databanks before they can be used. As you may have noticed, the interface for peer components and labor types were similar. However, there are other databanks that have slightly different interfaces. One of those is the consumables. On the left-hand side of this dialog, we have the various types of consumables, and you can also add your own through the Add New button. If you select one of these types, resin for example, a list appears on the right-hand side of the dialog where you can see the consumables of that type that are available. Notice that there are consumables displayed with a red color while others are displayed with a green color. The ones that are displayed in red are part of the designer database and cannot be modified. So if I click on any of them, you'll see that the various attributes are grayed out. On the other hand, the ones that are displayed in green belong to the user database and you can modify all of its attributes. Besides modifying existing consumables, you can also add new ones by first selecting the consumable type and then clicking on the Add New button. Through this window, you can specify the resin name, purchase cost, and consumable life, among others. This new type of resin that I just added then becomes available for selection in the unit procedures that use this type of consumable, such as the chromatography column. Let's now have a look at the Sites and Resources databanks, as it also has a different interface. In general, the Sites and Resources databank can be used to facilitate technology transfer and process fitting, and it can also be used to facilitate cost analysis. Let's go ahead and open up the Sites and Resources databank. Through this dialog, you see all the sites that are available, and by default, there is a site that is called Chemtech, which can represent a chemical plant, and if you click on it, you'll see that on the right-hand side, a list of available resources appears. Furthermore, a site can have multiple suites, and as you can see here, the Chemtech site has Suite A and Suite B, which in turn have resources that belong to that suite, such as equipment. If we double-click on a piece of equipment, the program brings up a dialog that displays its properties. You can see the specifications for this particular piece of equipment in this area. Also, you can specify cost-related information for the equipment. Through the next tab, you can specify extra variables, which you can add by clicking on the Add New button. From this list, you can then select the type of variable that you would like to add. Furthermore, you can also add a new variable by first selecting the user database, and then clicking on the Add New button. 
Let's add a variable called metal finish for example, so let's specify that as its name. Next, you can select the type of variable and you can specify its values. It's important to mention that SuperPro gives you the flexibility to add this information so that you can describe your equipment in greater detail. Furthermore, through this tab you can add comments and through the next you also have the option to add a picture. It's also important to mention that if you use this data bank to describe your equipment in detail that the reports generated will include the information. As I mentioned earlier, this data bank can be used to facilitate cost analysis and cost data can be specified to the site by right-clicking on the site and selecting to edit its properties. Through the Capital Investment tab, you can specify parameters which are used for capital cost estimation and through the Operating Cost tab, you can specify parameters that are useful for estimating facility overhead. This feature can be used as part of cost analysis and I'll explain it later in more detail. Let's now have a closer look at the equipment database. In terms of this database, the objective is to allow you to store data for equipment that you can buy from various vendors. For instance, if you select this, you can see a short list of reactors sold by a manufacturer and if you double click on any of this, you can see information specific to the equipment from that manufacturer. Also, there are filtering capabilities, such as this one, that allows you to filter by equipment size. So in general, the idea of this is that you can keep a database for equipment which is being marketed by various vendors instead of keeping that information in binders or folders. Furthermore, another feature for the Equipment Data Bank is that you may also define user cost models for your equipment. For instance, you can add a new cost model for an equipment type by clicking on the Add New button, giving a name for the equipment, such as Pharma Reactors, and then specifying the cost data in this type of format. So for example, you can add cost data for reactors that have a volume between 0 and 5 cubic meters. You also need to specify the base capacity of maybe 2 cubic meters and specify a base cost, say, $150,000. Furthermore, you also need to specify an exponent, say, 0.6 and then the program uses this information to estimate the price in case its size is between 0 and 5 cubic meters. You can also have multiple ranges. This data can then be used as part of the cost analysis. This concludes part 1 of the databanks tutorial. Please make sure to watch part 2 where I'll finalize this tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention.